Hey, looks like we're good to go. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Sorry for the bit of a delay. Gotta learn to better manage my time, I suppose. Uh, I'm gonna just test it out, make sure that I can hear myself on my end. Good, audio is good. If there's any audio problems, you'll let me know. Other than that, we're good. Um, so we have a fun painting process today. I'm just gonna um, make sure I have the reference here. For some reason, now I doubt myself. Uh, but in the meantime, let me know how you're doing, where you're watching from, and uh, what, you're, what you're working on. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make sure I have the reference photo here on my end, YouTube channel, vids. Um, we're gonna paint this cool uh, cityscape. This is a picture I took randomly a couple of days ago. There we go. Uh, you can see it on the screen now. Um, a very simple, kind of unassuming, uh, now, I do wonder uh, if you'd like me to paint it um, directly or with pencil lines. I have a sketch ready, kind of a rough sketch, um, but I'm curious to hear if you'd prefer to see how I approach this directly. Uh, no uh, pencil lines whatsoever. Uh, so let me know in the chat and as more people join, we'll get started on the painting process. Uh, I think it's really rewarding to see things kind of appear on paper very fast. And this is kind of a quick win scene. If I'm being honest with you, it's not that tough uh, of a subject matter, generally speaking. Uh, hey, Jacqueline, how are you doing? Thank you for being here. Nancy from Raining Acre, Ohio. Uh, did everyone watch the eclipse? How was it? Let me know. We didn't have it here, as far as I know. Uh, Andres, how are you doing? Greetings from Costa Rica. Thank you for being here. Awesome. I don't remember having a lot of people from Costa Rica ever here, so that's cool. Uh, Patrick, good evening. I love that star. Uh, Jacqueline, I'm working on my Bible study this morning. Just read Psalm 83. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, John Hyleron, hope you're well and doing okay. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm doing well. Uh, for the last couple of... Um, Last couple of uh, days now, why am I seeing two audio channels? I'm gonna get rid of one. Uh, let's test, make sure the audio doesn't disappear. I don't think I need... Um, let's try and get rid of this one. Hopefully audio continues flowing through. I don't think it'll matter, uh, but we'll just confirm that. Let's see, now I gotta talk. I hear myself delayed. Um, uh, Jacqueline uh, says, uh, but I do have a friend that wants me to paint her vision. It's very interesting. Oh, cool. Uh, hey, Sue from Australia, 10 p.m. Yeah, it's a challenging time for Australians. Challenging time of day. Uh, yeah, cool, cool. I'm hearing myself okay. Marjorie, how are you doing? Hope everything is well. I'm gonna get rid of my bubble. Gun. Sorry about that. Good morning from Cleveland. Cool. I really enjoyed visiting Cleveland. Uh, Sudan Shu, uh, or is it Sudan Shu? Sudan Shu. Thank you so much, sir, for helping us. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, Nancy, cool. Yeah, way cool eclipse. Total eclipse. <laughs> cool. Yes. It, it, I saw some pictures. It looked wonderful. Um, so here's what we're going to paint. Again, quick win, easy scene. Let me know in the chat if you'd like me to uh, paint it directly. No pencil. Um, I, I, that's something I really enjoy, kind of s focusing on one bit of the painting fully. By the way, I don't even know if I have any black paint left. Let me actually check, because I might, I might have run out, and then how are we supposed to paint this? Now, you should be able to hear me from afar. That's what's cool here, because I'm mic'd, basically. The mic is on me. Marjorie, you're going to use one of the palettes uh, you sent me, so thank you so much for that. Um, just because I ran out of black paint in my other two main palettes, actually. And I have a, a, a tube here somewhere. I should have one, but I have no idea where it is. Um, so, yeah, sorry, this is the least prepared I've been probably in a while. So it's going to be either this palette or another one I have here on my desk. Let's see which one has the more accessible dark, I think. Um, yeah, we'll use this, this neutral tint, more than good enough. Okay, good. So we're almost prepared. <laughs> well, we'll get there. We will 
get there. By the way, thank you so much for the um, uh, the views and comments on some of the recent videos. Got a lot of interest, so I guess the topics were speaking to people, so that makes me quite happy. Um, the topic we're going to focus on is something I do cover in my watercolor realism course, so you can check that out afterwards. It's the first link in the description box. Uh, if you haven't joined that one, if you are in the frustration free watercolor course and you haven't joined that one, that could be your next step. Um, I'll let me mute this. Uh, so feel free to do that. What I cover here is going to be very similar to that from a technical standpoint. Um, let's see. Uh, Jacqueline says 7 a.m. in Alabama. <laughs> cool, that's early. Sudan, so good, good afternoon from India. Fausto, uh, ciao. I don't know how to pronounce it, but cool, from Italy, thank you for being here, uh, Fausto. Melanie, good morning, Liron, from Atlanta, Georgia, USA, thank you for sharing your gift, thank you, I'm uh, glad you're safe, yes. Betty Ryan, good morning, from Atlanta, Georgia, oh, cool, we have a lot of Atlanta representation here. Um, so I did a very simple sketch here, let me show you, um, which should do the trick now. One second, so I'm now on the left audio. So let me just. Okay, I'm gonna have to add that device real quick. So I'm gonna be quiet for like 10 seconds. Give me, give me 10 seconds. Okay, now we should be good on that scene as well. So I have this sketch that I did. Very simple sketch. We'll get rid of these. We don't need them this time. All we need is this palette. Just some neutral tint. Don't worry, I'll fix it so that you can see everything. And yeah, I want to test out just to make sure we're all good technically that I can hear myself still. Yeah, we're good. Now, if the, you know, audio disappears or something like that, let me know. Um, and I'll fix it because it might happen. Uh, it might just happen if, I, if my uh, thingy runs out of battery, which could happen. Good. Um, so, now let's make sure I can see your um, chat as well. Good. Okay, I'm seeing everything. Good, good, good. So I actually think I'll start without a pencil sketch. If you want to later, we can do um, we can do another version uh, with the pencil sketch. I don't know. I feel like painting from uh, kind of direct perception, if you will. Um, let me move the reference. We don't really need it there. And place it here or maybe you know what it's better here we'll leave it here we'll keep it here um, and then we'll have the palette like so I'm only gonna be using this neutral tint which is just a black paint uh, hey David how are you doing um, yes by the way here's me again <laughs> so thank you so much to everyone who just joined uh, and we'll get to it. So I think we'll start painting this. No pencil lines. No pencil lines. For now. Uh, for now, I think it'll be fun to do it this way. Um, I want to just confirm one last thing. The volume here. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Good. We're good, we're good. So I'll probably zoom in just a bit. Sorry about that notice. Um, I'll probably start with that main car I see there and try and place that in. This scene is quite, um, quite zoomed out, but let's give it a try. Now I am going to need my other palette as it turns out because I don't have enough mixing area there. So let's do something like this. There we go. A bit 
clunky, but it will do the trick. Or I can just, I think I can get rid of, no, okay, we'll keep it, we'll keep it. Let's make sure that this is indeed neutral tint and not something else. Uh, it might not be neutral tint, no, it looks good, it looks good. Um, so yeah, I just have, I don't know, I have a opaque paint on my palette, I think, but that's fine. So I'm gonna get started here with this main car and let's see what I can make out of it. This is a bit of a, a high risk move. Um, but I think we'll be fine. I know it takes me a, a while to to get started. It's just um, it's this stage of the painting that I find one of the more fascinating ones. Yeah, I'm, this might not be neutral tint. I'm not sure. Well, Marjorie, you let me know. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so we have that main car. Now, do I want to start actually with some large shapes? No, we'll start with the main car. We will start with the main car. I'm going to start with the windshield. I know it's crazy, but this is how I'm going to do it. Um, we can make a more accurate version later on. I know what I'm doing is a bit crazy. I'm trying to innovate upon myself. Um, so that would be the windshield. And I have a damp brush. I don't need it to be super wet. I just want uh, to blend this a bit. Something like so. And that will start making up that windshield. So this goes here. And this is flat. And this is a straight line. And then from under there, We'll start bringing in the front of the car. Now I may have painted it too large, that's fine. And then we're gonna move down here. There's actually some highlights for the headlights of the car. Kind of missed one, but I'll I'll leave it like that for now. And I know it's crazy, I know it's crazy. That's how I feel like painting right now. So sometimes you have to give yourself what you want. Um, so, and then we have a dark shadow under the car. And it's really fun to see the car appear. That's the thing I'm after here. Can I make it appear in front of us? Just like that. There's a very thin shadow underneath. And I think a bit of a wider base there, if I'm not mistaken, which will let me actually bring back the headlight here if I really want to. And I know I'm zoomed out a bit. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. I, I do want to show the overall picture. I don't really want to zoom in at this stage. But this would be a car. Um, this would definitely be a car. Now, I do want to maybe, and this is hot press paper, by the way, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, yeah, neutral tint is uh, a bit different from Payne's Gray, but you know what? That's a good observation because this feels more like Payne's Gray uh, than neutral tint. Payne's Gray is a bit cooler. This feels a bit like that. I could be imagining though. Um, but you see what we have here is a car. It's actually a car, it worked. Um, now what I think I'll do while I'm at it is let's see if I can capture some of the street or the ground while I'm working on this car. So if I use more water and I kind of go like this, by the way, if, the, if there's any problems like with background noise, I can close the window. It's currently open just because it's nice outside, but let me know I can close it. Um, so we're going to paint the street, the ground level, like so. It's not white, even though it's light, it's not white. And it kind of ends around here. Then we have a bunch of dark details. And then it goes almost to the edge of the paper. So this starts establishing the ground for us. Now it's still not perfect. 
We'll get more details in. It's still a mess. Don't worry. So let's move on to the next car, which is something I like doing because it starts bringing out some negative shapes. Uh, so if we imagine, we do have the mirror here. And then if we imagine, we see behind it. So the car there has a bit of a shape like so. Uh, let me zoom in, even though you won't see as much. I want, to I want you to see some of my brushwork. So let's see, I think that's better. And uh, what I'm doing off paper isn't as important right now, actually. Okay, now I see all your comments. Yeah, I like uh, paints great too. Uh, so I'm, I'm a big fan of warm paintings, so that's the only problem I sometimes run into with it. It's, it doesn't match a lot of my paintings uh, color scheme. Now, so around that windshield of that car in the back, there's a big highlight in the center, but then there's here, you see a bit of a mid valley there that goes like this. No, I don't like the light and shadow. I'm gonna zoom out a bit. Sorry for that stupid error message every time I do that, um, but yeah. And now let's start placing in uh, that other car, there's another pretty major car here. I'm just gonna go for it. Let's see, I'm, I'm, I may end up being a little quiet for a couple of moments just so that I can focus, uh, but let's see. So this is a tire, it goes like this. Connects to the shadow underneath. And we do have the front of the car. These aren't the easiest shapes, but what I'm trying to show you here is that you can really develop these as you go along. Uh, so if, if the shape is inaccurate because we're not doing any sketch basically, it's okay, you're not married to what it looks like. You can improve it if you want to, if it doesn't look right. Uh, you don't have to worry about it being perfect the first time. Uh, but you can kind of um, carve it out as you go along. Uh, actually, hot press paper can be an advantage in these instances um, because it is quite malleable, the, the paint that is. Um, now we can add some cool details here, almost wet and wet. So let's see what we got here. This kind of a thing, we have a bit of a darkness here. These windows, all the bottom section and the tires so that was a little sloppy of me, sorry about that. Shadow here. And all of this front bumper area. A bit of a shadow here, I would say. And we got another car. Um, Sharon, hi Sharon from South Africa, busy exploring color theory, painting with watercolors. Um, I can't see one word, a mixing Viridian color study with Chris, Kirsten Van Leven, YouTube. Cool, cool. Thank you for joining in. Uh, hey, Jacqueline, thank you so much. Yes, if you can drop a like on the video, that will help. Hey, Miriam from Spain, thank you for being here. Uh, did I miss anything else? No, we're good. We're good. So I'm going to move uh, ahead and paint the car that is closer to us. So let me just figure out the perspective here. Uh, I can even drop a few of these lines to kind of help guide me through. So we have this ground and it goes like this all the way here, which means that car is going to be somewhere around here. So that's good. And then there's a distance here. So about this area and I can start dropping in that other closer car. So let's see what I can do here without any Sketch. Top of the car aligns with the top here. So that would be the left side of the car. So let's see how we can carve that out. So this is quite dark, the window. I'll drop that. We can add a few highlights uh, later on, by the way, bring back some 
maybe shapes that were a little harder to maintain. That's the bottom of the car. You know what's so funny? I wouldn't be f opposed to just leaving the ground as light as it is now. Just as a fun, fun thing to do. Um, and we're going to close up all of this and this. And we'll leave this small highlight under the windows. Now, this is cool. So this line goes ahead and then ends in a sharp kind of shape. This moves down, goes around. Now, we have to make sure we get the distance right. So this is one, two, three, about a third. So it should end somewhere around here. If I'm being a little careful, we'll see how, how it'll go. I want to leave some lights for the headlights, like so. Now again, you don't have to paint like this, but I'm just trying to show you how, you know, the way most are used to painting. Uh, you also don't have to paint that way. You can really build it up any way you want. And that's what's so fun about watercolor. You can get away with so much. Um, like me getting away with messing up this gap here. There should be a gap here. I'll bring it back later with opaque paint. Here, there should be a gap. Maybe I can, uh, there, I don't know if there's any point in lifting it, but that's fine. Let's make this dark, um, close up this entire middle section. The reason I'm doing this black and white is because it is easier uh, when I'm doing something that's a little more, you know, complex than usual. But you see how it's a car, right? You can start Kind of tell. Uh, now let's let's rework this area just to make sure it's dark enough where I want it to be. I almost want to say, okay, this area is done. It's perfect. Um, so we have this. This looks almost like a police car. I'm not sure though. And then this connects here. We will have a bit of a shadow, a bit of a shadow underneath. To me, this is one of the more meditative things I can do really um, to paint this way. It really, really brings out something special. I'm pre-wetting so that I can visit the area around it and get a nice smooth transition. See, that's really fun. So I don't know, you tell me, is this, it looks like a car, I guess, right? I think it worked out. It's a little stumpy in the front, but that's fine. I can widen that area just a bit. We may actually, yeah, that's good. And I would say the front here, um, just to show it's rounded, I can just add a bit like so. See, that gives it a feeling it's rounded down. I really like that look. Uh, Nancy looks very, looking very nice. Thank you. MD Cox Handsome, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Yep. And now we can get the car behind that one. That's something I, again, enjoy doing. It gives more context. So I'm going to grab a bit of a darker paint and then we can work in relations to that car, you see? So we can see that this window, there's a mirror here, side view mirror. And then if this leaks in, that's fine, but I can tilt it a bit if I don't want it to. Let's say the mirror is here somewhere. A bit of a highlight on the other mirror and look here we're gonna kind of close off that car by painting the car behind it right and again you can mess this up you know if you're worried man this is harder than drawing it really isn't because you get a chance to look on paper and see what's going on there that's to me the fun part 
So we can look at things in isolation and kind of say, okay, does it look right? Is something off? Whereas if you have a sketch ready to go, you're already constrained to that in terms of your imagination. Uh, that's how I see it. Sometimes, you know, not always. Um, so yeah. Now, so we have another kind of a nice pattern here. And then this goes like that, kind of a shape. Close off this bit. Maybe there's a bit of a highlight there. We're gonna close off border that front of the hoops. Touch that, that's okay. Um, leave a little light under the headlight, like so. And also here to the side, it goes a little lighter. And once we put in that windshield, it's gonna close off another happy car. Now, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna. I think in a second, take a quick, quick break to see what you're saying. If there's anything interesting. Um, Jacqueline, how do you decide what to paint? I have so many reference photos, it's hard to pick what to paint first. Uh, honestly, I think that's kind of, that can be some kind of form of avoidance. Um, I do, because I've painted for so long, I know exactly what I like painting, so I always, uh, I always, I have a good sense of what I feel like painting next. And even though there are some pictures that when I took them, I was sure I'm gonna really enjoy painting, they sit in a folder because I don't feel like now is the moment. Um, so that is fine, that happens. Um, but at any given moment, I can open up my folder and find something that I know would make a good painting right now. Uh, I so I'm sometimes wrong, but usually I get it right. Um, so I think, it's not really about what you paint, it's your kind of feeling and how, how you feel about painting it right now. Um, and it can very quickly, I think, become a bit of avoidance. So you wanna make sure that's not the thing that's going on uh, if you are trying to, you know, paint more. Um, I honestly, you know, you, can, you don't even have to paint something, you can just take a piece of paper and kind of start experimenting with it and try and, you know, turn it into something that looks like something whether it's an apple or, you know, some kind of a simplified thing. Uh, and, and that would be your kind of painting. Like the what is never what limits me. Um, it's never about the what should I paint or, you know, what feels right. I just, I'll, I, I need to, on a very logistical sense, just find it. Uh, but it's very, it's very easy to me to know. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna paint this. And if you don't know, then it doesn't matter, you know? <laughs> If you, if you don't care what it is in particular, like in Alice in Wonderland, if you don't really know where you're going or where you wanna go, then any direction will do, right? Sometimes I think about it this way. So now we'll have a bit of a tire and a shadow underneath. So that's another car, right? You see, as simple as that. Now I'm gonna zoom out a bit. There we go. I hope the light and shadow on the video makes sense. Yeah, I think it looks good, okay. And you see it starts to show up. Now, uh, there's a bunch of cars there. Now I'm gonna start adding them in. Looney Cool, I have a problem with my watercolors. I have professional ones and my paints sometimes don't mix when doing wet on wet. And if it's too watery, I get ugly edges. Interesting, I may need to see it in order to fully understand what you mean by that. Um, I have professional ones. Which brand, by the way, just curious. Uh, my paints sometimes don't mix when doing wet and wet. Hmm, I'm not sure. I'll have to see it to understand. Uh, off the top of my head, it's a little hard to know exactly what's going on. Feel free to send me pictures. I have my email listed so you can, uh, you can send me an email. Or send me a message on Instagram. Uh, I'm not sure. Jacqueline, sometimes I do avoid painting commissions out of fear. I worry I'll mess it up, but I do pray and start usually after cleaning the house. Yeah, if it's a commission, <laughs> if it's a commission, usually it's uh, it's a bit of a different story. I don't know, I find that they bring out better paintings in me because I'm kind of obligated to someone else. Uh, and not everyone will probably be this way, but I'm like that. Um. making some stronger shadows there. Um, 
And by the way, sometimes Looney Cool, you can go too watery and then you'll lose a bit of control that you do need. Uh, it's, it's okay not to go too watery. You know, you can paint pretty much however way you want. If something is not working, try maybe the other, the opposite and see what happens. Uh, it's Deja Vu, hello from the Philippines. Thank you for being here. Uh, Laura, thank you for being here as well. Um, Betty, I love the way you paint without a drawing. You can, you can tell you have painted cars before. Yeah, definitely. I think the hardest part in painting proportions and distance. Yeah, and it is very hard, but um, even if you just go at it fast and rough, kind of, you'll get something nice, um, usually. Even if it's just blobs. Like, for example, you could simplify this scene even more um, if you want. You could just kind of place one car in so that it's going to be just the shadow at the front, get a windshield in, and just get some tires under it and call it a day. Like you could just start with something, even if it looks, in your opinion or in someone else's opinion, terrible. You could just, you know, start placing in those shapes and praying. <laughs> Like you said, it's okay, it's not going to be perfect. But then if you wrap some buildings around it, you know, very often, without even thinking about it, it will start making a bit more sense, you see. Just by placing some small details in it, you can almost read it abstractly as what it is. Uh, the mind is very good at recognizing patterns and kind of figuring out what it's looking at. Uh, so you'll be surprised how much of the, of the work it does. Like I'm going to add two darks here. And that's it. It looks like a car going away from us, you know. I'm going to add a few directional lines. And do you see, it's, it's, a lot of it is actually on the viewer, you know. Uh, Lunicool, I have Windsor and Newton, Professional, and Daniel Smith. I will definitely try to find some of my examples and send it to you. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be curious to see it. Uh, yes, indeed, Jacqueline, yeah, higher standard for commissions. Exactly. Um, let's see what I missed here. Okay, good. Watching you paint is therapeutic. Thank you, it's deja vu. Thank you so much. It's uh, therapeutic for me to paint, so I guess it works in every, in every sense. Uh, so we do have this car here close to the edge. I'm going to add that in quite simply. I do see there's a roundedness. And then it goes um, down like this, back like that, goes down all the way into the tire. And... Then there's a shadow under it. Tire goes like this. This goes diagonally. And then we can start darkening what's needed. So here's something interesting. This is larger, so we can just put the shadow around the center of the tire. And it will look pretty neat, I think. See how it reads as a tire? Hopefully you can see it. I know it's a bit... Um, Then window, whatever, get that in. There's actually a tail light here. I'm going to keep it light. There's another here. These are the most fun ones. So behind that, there's another car, but it's basically just a windshield. So it's a windshield. <laughs> it goes kind of like that. And then the front and then a bit of a shadow underneath. That's a car, right? So it's it gets easier the smaller they are and the farther they are. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, happy you enjoy, enjoy these too. Uh, so now we have this car. Let's start placing some stuff behind that. Sorry, the light and shadow will shift a bit here. It's okay. The sun is... It's a bit of a confused day. Uh, it's not sure if it wants to be warm or not. So I'm going to start with the shadow under the car, actually. So this is the shadow. The tire is coming from that. Then uh, all of this front part is in the sh it should be smaller i kind of exaggerated it but that's fine goes here goes to the side side of the car again i'm really i i don't know exactly how i'm placing it this is too much by the way i don't know if i'm i'm not as accurate that's fine um we have the windshield kind of here that would be a car to me it's not a perfect car but it's a car of course these are darker side of the car generally is darker. There's a window here. What I'm looking for is I'm just trying to paint a, a, a scene like a theater almost. Uh, the theater really uh, does a lot, plays a lot of tricks on you, right? Things look 
uh, like they're there when in fact they're not. Uh, things look like, you know, the stage can look full of stuff, but basically there's not a lot and most of it is just fooling your eyes. That's the kind of thing I'm going for. Maybe these are a bunch of cars kind of together. Uh, here we have a truck and a bunch of cars way at the back there. So I'm going to try and simplify some of those details in the truck window. It's a little higher up. Now our, let's say, bigger risk move would be um, darkening the ground, but it will pay off. You'll see in a second. But first I would like to, yeah, I started putting the truck and then I realized I'm going to need a mid, mid medium value for it. And then the shadow is going to be on the top of the cabin here. Maybe a bit here. See, that's going to be a truck, but we'll give it a moment. What I think I'll do next is build everything around the scene. Um, so I'm going to start putting in the buildings and such. Um, no real good way to do it other than to get started. Uh, so bear with me. I'm going to try and focus so that I don't mess this part up. We'll see how it goes. See, I'm, I know this tall building is above this car. So that's where I'm starting. Uh, so I'm going to go like this. That's a good starting point. down there's a building that looks a little like a hotel there it's actually just a normal building now you'll notice this goes down all the way almost to this car but then what will happen is we're going to switch to a bit of a darker value because there's a lot of foliage there that i do want to convey um, so i know this looks strong it's actually quite weak we're gonna make it much stronger for all the foliage down here. And you see shapes that are in proximity to one another. The edges mix together and it, it looks really nice. Some of them maintain their position while others move and flow a bit. Uh, that's a part of the beauty of this kind of a scene where the background is quite uh, simplified, I would say. And it's not as, doesn't have to be religiously accurate. Um, so there we go. And you'll start, you'll start seeing a cityscape. That's just how it works. You'll start seeing, you know, buildings and details that's not there because of magic, you know? How can I say this otherwise? Uh, now we're gonna get a bit of a lighter tone because this here is like a kind of metal fence or something like that, I'm not sure. Along the highway or road, goes a little lighter and it kind of closes up here. So you see we started we have this frame and then it goes back to some lighter values too for um, this section here. So this is going to be a shorter building, I guess, not as tall. A few details. Now I'm placing the details that way because I'm going to fill in the blanks with darks. Like so. This is going to be a relatively quick, I think, painting process. How long have we been going for? About, oh, 42 minutes. Okay, not bad, not bad. What's, what is important here is just to make sure the tops of the cars make sense. So we can, of course, edit stuff later on, um, bring back highlights and lost details, but uh, just generally speaking, I do want it to look good right away. So let's make this other car lower hanging. I think it was too high to begin with. Uh, let's close off some of these buildings. I think after I finish this skyline, uh, I'll take a quick break and uh, let me know if you have any general questions about watercolor or this process as well. Uh, and I'll kind of take the opportunity to address them. Uh, bit of foliage. Now here we get to this little truck. I do want to make sure I leave a highlight for the top area above the cabin. So a bit of a highlight here. Most importantly, leave this area clean, like so. It has a bit of a V shape there. 
It's funny how as artists you don't really have to know even what you're looking at to paint it. Um, you can just paint it. It's pretty fantastic, I would say, how that works. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff there, but I'll keep it simple. Hey, Megan, how are you doing? I'm going to read in a second. Just need to concentrate for this next bit. Croc, there's a dark detail here that I left this area blank for. I don't even know what that is. I have no idea. I saw it there. I still don't know what it is. Uh, there's a bit of a dark shadow here. And the, the most important part is going to be... Uh, this is too low. So I think around here. Yep. And that's going to close off the entire left section. Again, you can shape it as you go along. You can place some paint in. If it's too dark, bring back water. If it's too light, bring back more paint. This top of the sign here. The side of the sign, I suppose. The top part of the sign is light, that's fine. But if the bottom is dark, bring in more dark paint. More water, because I'm kind of losing the flow here. But you really can carve out these shapes as you go along. See, there's a lot of foliage here, so this should be a little darker. The side of the sign's pretty dark. Let's get that in. Um, this here, there's a gap. I shouldn't have this gap. This is kind of a building. Let's add a few details there to the floors there, something like that. This is a little dark. There's a street light here. Well, we can get more details in that later on. But you see the scene has appeared, <laughs> right? Hopefully you can see it. Uh, is... You can even still do wet and wet here. It's pretty crazy. This is still workable. So I can just add, see here? This is really cool because it's hot pressed paper. I can still kind of add details and have them be a little erased by the wetness that stays on top of the paper. Um, so that's pretty cool. And you know what? This starts to look like something. Now this sign does have some lights above it. So I'm going to add those in. And there are a few kind of individual details. And I think there's a lot of details on the rooftops of some of these buildings. I went a little too dark on some of them, but that's fine. Let's darken this bit. Um, let's go like this. And here I kind of lost these details on the floors, balconies, whatever it is. And you see, without even stating things blatantly, you can kind of tell what we're looking at. Let me go back to the front camera. We'll talk a bit and then I'll do some final touches. I want to kind of address if you have any questions or if you want to ask something. So here we are, just to give you a, a, another look at it. See, it, it just appears. It happens. Of course, we still have that fence to, to take care of. There's some darks there. Uh, but I think it's a good point to take a break. I'll read some of the comments. If there's not enough, I'll just go back and... Um, Megan, hi there. I'm homesick, so I get to watch your stream. Oh, sorry, you're, you're sick, but I'm happy you're home. Uh, so, and you get to watch. Thank you so much, Marjorie. Thank you so, so much. Um, let me show you here. The sketch I did is quite simple. I may end up painting based on it later on. I did trace because I was in a hurry, but you see it's just a couple of details. But even without any sketch, you can get it to look quite convincing. What I was mentioning earlier is, yes, you run the risk here when you darken the road, but what you will earn is the highlights on the cars will make more sense. Uh, we have also some shadows here to add. To me, this scene is, it's cars, but it's not really about cars, if that makes sense. This, this scene is about the highway. All of the cars together. That's what gives it a meaning, in my opinion. Um, hey, Sandrine, thank you for being here. Really great. Hi from France. Thank you. Uh, Marjorie, so cool watching everything appear. Yes, yes, that last step, in a, especially, just, it appears. It's there. Um, yeah, I think we caught up. Okay, I'm going to give you a few seconds. I'm going to blow my nose here. I cut my hand very foolishly. Let me go back to the desk so you don't see me. <coughs> so 
so yeah, I cut my hand very foolishly on a, I wanted to put something into the closet and I just bumped it against one of the shelves. That was dumb. Oh, by the way, yes, I should probably do a plug to the course. Again, if you want to learn pretty much what I'm doing here, but not without pencil, I, I go with pencil there. Check out the uh, watercolor realism course. And I will put the link, especially if you already got the frustration free watercolor course. It's a simple extra step and you get the watercolor realism course. It's all accessible in the same place, same website. The same way you log in, you'll be able to uh, find that. I do have a couple of portraits there. So what you see down here, uh, there are there we go, like this. There are two portraits, a cityscape. There's a lot there. There's also clouds. I do a bunch of stuff. Um, so yeah, you can check that out. There's a link below. You can click it and then check it out later on if you want to. Uh, Sharon, fantastically, Ron, you make it look so easy. You know, honestly, it's the, I get the best results when it does feel easy, and it does feel easy right now. Like, this is really great fun for me. If I go back a little bit, it starts to look almost like a photo, I would say. Just the road needs darkening, this fence needs darkening. This, the coolest part to me is how this appears. All of these details, that's one of the more fun parts. It just appears there. And, and again, notice how the... This is quite, you could say this is quite sloppy, right? Because I just put paint and then put dark paint and put light paint and all kind of mixes together. But this does go to show you how you don't need much. The, the brain doesn't need much to latch onto and build a full scene in your head. That's the coolest part here, I think. Um, where a bunch of abstract shapes, I'm not even talking about the cars, right? The cars are a little more complex. There's a bit more details. I re fully recognize that. But this... And the setting, it just works. Um, so very often, you know, Joseph Zbukovic said it takes belief. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else will buy it. It's true, but it's it's true in the very basic non-spiritual sense. It's just if you if you paint it, it will happen in some way or another. It may require you know some polishing up. It may require some improvements, but it will happen. Very often. People, instead of being concerned with what they want to express, they're concerned with more shallow level things of how am I going to get this to look accurate? How am I going to... And these thoughts usually, in my experience, they don't lead to the desired result. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Diane, highly wrong greetings from the, um, the UK. Hope you and your family are keeping well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, yeah, so let's let's wrap this process up. I'm gonna finish it. There isn't much. Let me show you what's left. We'll do it quick. Um, so yeah, the quality here is a little better. Uh, so we have right. Uh, we have the road there that needs to be darker, at least some of it. We have this uh, fence, whatever that is, needs to be darker, and some details on the cars. So I'm gonna start with the part that is perceived as the hardest. It's gonna be the ground. I don't want to go too dark, so I'm going to be a little careful here, but not too careful. So this is going to be kind of our starting move. And then we will move this paint all the way here. I think somewhere around here it lightens up a bit. So first we'll get that in. And then I'm just going to go back with some clean water. And see what happens. I'm just going to stretch it up out to the right so that we get something that's a little darker, but honestly, barely noticeable. Now, what we're doing right now does is it makes the highlights on the cars mean something more than they currently are because we're eliminating other areas that are paper white. So we make essentially the highlights more unique. That's what happens. So you see already, boom, it has, the surface has a bit more gravitas to it. Now, the lower part of the fence is a wall. So this is actually a wall, right? And then there's a highlight, and above that highlight, we have the actual, I don't know what you'd call this, but it's going to be in a pattern like so. So I'm going to place it in with a few gaps just to show that it's vertically placed objects. And as we move further and further, I'm going to make the gaps a little narrower. So that gives us the fence to the left pretty nicely. Um, there is a bit of a stronger shadow here. Under this. 
and of course here and here so and there are some of that as well and that starts to again it shows up uh, is it I think it's not dark enough so let's do that just get some sections of it a little stronger yep here we go and so that covers this that some details on the card so let's if I feel like some details were lost I'm gonna bring them in let's switch over to a smaller brush and this can just a few touches can go a long way so I'm gonna start with the main car here because I think it takes up a lot of attention so one thing I notice is there's a bit of a stronger separation here between the light and the shadow this line's it's kind of there there's not much to do uh, this one's going to be more in terms of the highlights i feel like this goes up like this there is the mirror it does go over this section and we're going to see a lot of these small shadows in the windshield same here there's a bit of it here too but here you can start going into more of the nitty gritty. You can bring in the logo. Some more small details if you want. But really not much. We're not trying to overwork this thing. So still very gentle. Uh, let's see what we have here on this car. There's a bit of a V shape here this front side I guess you could go a little stronger here let's separate the tires and shadow underneath like so see how cool that looks I really like that let's do this here same thing here and let's see what we have with this car here and don't worry we're gonna add some highlights as well uh, but we have the tire here and again this is perfect as is you don't have to do anything but if you want to bring out more sharpness to it you can uh, if you want to keep it more vague like it is right now I like that look as well a lot um, really depends on what you're trying to achieve there's no real um, right or wrong here with any of this really oh yeah there are a bunch of darker shadows here I wanted to make more pronounced I'm gonna put these in very abstractly actually there we go just to show there's like this there we go this looks like a huge car by the way from behind there and I think uh, we can put in the some of the highlights with like a white gel pen we'll try sometimes it doesn't work as well but on hot press paper it works well so this for example and the one we lost on the other side uh, this one has pretty defined headlights now let me show you something cool this is one of the coolest sections I was looking forward to doing this little line here see that shapes the window this highlight over the mirror see that and for the door handles check it out looks much better we do also have the headlights that have a very distinct pattern same goes here we have this kind of a thing going on and above the cars too you can recognize quite a few of these you know small highlight ish details this kind of a thing um, there's a hint of a separation there between the um, doors or windows here you can just celebrate just put a bunch of headlights you know whatever you see fit there's maybe a highlight here um, oh yeah the, the truck there's a bit of a thing going on there we have the lights of the truck I don't know if you know but if you notice but there are a lot of trucks with this pattern of light it's kind of a V reverse V I've seen a lot of these here um, and honestly wow I kind of think we're done you can if you want just to give the viewers more to look at if you want to 
um, you can hint at more details, um, even at the back. So what I like to do, the way I like to approach this is I'll squint my eyes and kind of figure out, okay, where do I see stuff that I don't yet see here? So this is another sign. I can put the lights that are on that. Uh, there is a bit of a detail here. There's all of those small details on the buildings. There's this kind of a balcony-like thing up here. All of these details do add up. I don't know what that is. Could be a flag, whatever. All of these small lines add up. They build an impression. Maybe there's some, again, floor details here. I actually see some highlights here. I don't know what that is. Satellite dishes, whatever. Something catching a highlight there. I don't know what it is. Um, if we look at this um, big street lamp, it's actually lighter. So what I can put it in and then kind of blend it out. So we get the same effect. This is quite strong up here. So I'm going to add that, make it clearer. Um, I do see some vertical lines crossing the cars even. So let's place those in. I don't know what, what is in here. There's a bit of a shadow here. And all of these small details, they add up and they make the impression more believable. Um, we could divide this, it's, it's stripped, but I kind of striped, uh, but I kind of like it this way. Um, but maybe on the farther end, so here, maybe we can go like this, see? Just give it a bit of an impression there. Um, there's a logo of whatever company here. See all of these small details? They can look really, really nice. I would even make the contrast here with the foliage a little stronger. I know I should <laughs> switch over to a larger brush, but still, you know, it's not about the how, really. It's about what you see and what you want to show the viewer, what you want to express. If you want to add a few car antennas for the older cars, go ahead. Let's do that. Bit of an antenna here, antenna there. See? To me, um, I would say this is done. Let me sign it. We'll see if, uh, if you want me to add something else. Um, but I'm going to sign it proudly because I like it a lot. It's a small piece. And I can scan it for you if you want to see a better version of it. It's my weirdest signature ever. There we go. And yeah, this is what we've got. Uh, so let's see, let's see what you're asking. I could, you know, I could do this. Uh, Nancy, just wondering, do you ever venture out just to take reference photos or is it more just random when you're out and about? It is random. Uh, I walk with Worth uh, three times a day at least. Uh, so that's the perfect time. Uh, to me, that's the... I always end up seeing something cool. Not every walk, but at least once a week, I would say. I just come upon something that looks good and I end up taking a picture. Uh, or if we're going somewhere, in the car, whatever. Um, usually, I'll find myself seeing something cool and taking a picture of it. That's usually how it goes for me. It's not deliberate. I don't think I ever had to do it deliberately. Maybe once. Maybe once when I was looking for... Uh, to have a bunch of references for a um, specific art show that happened once. Um, so yeah, let's take this over to the desk. I'm going to show you a bit more. Uh, and we'll, we'll scan it so that I can put it on the screen right next to us. Uh, the photo reference, by the way, I did put a link to it if you want to paint, um, if you want to paint it. Um, it is posterized. So what I like about it is already there is some interpretation there. There's some simplification. There's something going on already in it uh, that makes it more accessible to paint, I suppose. You know, It's so funny. We can even darken the ground more. But to me, this looks good. Now, if I go back, you could almost think I'm holding up a, a photo that's printed or something. It could, it could fool you. Um, so yeah. It's deja vu. Your painting is truly remarkable. Thank you for sharing your incredible talent and igniting inspiration. Wishing you boundless success. Thank you. That's really well said. That's, that's I think, what it's all about. It's igniting that inspiration. Um, I don't think necessarily, you know, following exactly the steps I do will benefit you necessarily that way. I think it's more about, yep, the, 
um, the finding the drive to give it a try yourself, you know. Uh, oh, I'd love to watch you paint Ruth. Yes, maybe that will happen one day. I did ha make a few paintings of her, quite a few paintings of her. Um, perhaps I can do one uh, live or, you know, with a video. I actually did a video of gesture drawing with Ruth. That's, I think, a really good one. Now I'm going to dry this a bit. So let me mute myself for a second and I'll continue in a second. Yeah, so I'm going to scan it for you. We'll see how it goes. Um, and you know what's so funny? You could decide... You could decide to add paint to color to it now. I'm not sure exactly how, but you could decide to paint the sky, to paint some cars uh, uh, a yellow like Alvaro Castaneda often does. Uh, and it will look good. You know, it could look really, really good. Um, so you're definitely not limited to um, just black and white when you work this way. You can introduce color later. In fact, I know um, some oil painters and acrylic painters sometimes start in black and white and slowly introduce color. Now, of course, they can paint opaquely over existing paint. Um, but you could do a hybrid approach with watercolor. You're, you're not limited by anything. And I may, you know, experiment with trying to add some, um, some paint to this, maybe later. Um, let's see here, scan documents. Let me share it with you. Yep, I quite like how it turned out. And I think a lot of, um, there's a lot of, it's fun to see the quirkiness of my brush marks and how they're, Imperfect. I think that adds a lot of uh, a lot of grace to it, if you ask me. And this is going to be the scan because it's black and white. I don't have to do any color correction. That's the advantage. I'm just going to crop out the excess uh, area around the paper. Yep. There we go. Just give me one second. I'll show it on the screen. Image, scan. Uh, cityscape, there we go. Okay, it's a big file, but I'm gonna minimize. We can do a bit of a comparison, but to me, it's just a standalone, you know? You don't even have to compare the two. No, it's funny. Now I see the skies a little darker, actually. They're not even white, but I like it like so. So I'm going to leave it, I think. I think adding even a bit of... I'm actually happy it doesn't look like that on my end. Because I think adding even a little of a value there will kill it. Honestly, that's how I feel. Um, I love painterly paintings, yes. So let's do this. And just for a second, get rid of this one. You see how, again, this imperfection with the brush marks, um, I quite like it. Um, this is why I think it's interesting to take a painting you painted like a couple of years ago, if you can, and just look at it. Um, sometimes you'll, you'll tell yourself, okay, it sucks, <laughs> I don't like it. But sometimes you may discover that you couldn't see it for what it is because you were so close to the picture, but after you, look at it after a long time suddenly your brain does the leap takes the leap and you recognize it exactly as it is um, and I'd argue you probably have some paintings that will pass that test you know um, which is what's so fun about checking out old work Melanie when someone pays me for a painting I feel like an imposter will that ever go away um, you know I keep hearing about this Imposter syndrome. I, I I refuse to even recognize it as a thing. I don't think I ever had it. If someone liked your work and they pay you to paint for them, why would you feel like an imposter? You're getting paid to do it. You may struggle along the process, 
but they know what kind of an end result type they're getting and they paid for it. Um, so they are accepting, you know, people don't spend money on things they don't want to spend money on. Whether they have to for some other reason, maybe they don't want to, but they have to for some other reason, but they just don't generally do that. Um, so if someone's paying you, they're paying you. Uh, this goes obviously much deeper than, than painting. Uh, if you have an imposter syndrome, um, there's something there. Um, where it comes from is a good question. It's a really good question, very individualistic. Um, but you know, no one cares about the struggle along the way. All they care about is the end result. If you give them the end result they want and you have the time to do it, I mean, as long as your deadline isn't by tomorrow, you have the time. So take your time to, to do 20 attempts. Of course, you don't want to waste way too much time on a commission. Maybe it won't justify the price, but you know, you can do it at your leisure. Um, so I don't know, to me, I, I've never really had that imposter syndrome thing. I don't know where it comes from. Uh, but yeah, Yanzart, I enjoy commission work because I know they like my style and body of work. Yes, that's a good point. Yes, that's kind of what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, people just don't spend money on things they don't want to. So if someone pays you, they probably are happy with what you produce. Uh, Jacqueline, I wonder if Van Gogh had imposter syndrome. You know, if anyone did have it, it could be Van Gogh, I think. You know, out of all the artists out there, it was a strange one indeed. Uh, but yeah, I'm kidding. I don't know much about him. By the way, there's going to be a new episode of Painting Masters on, uh, I think, sa Sunday. I'm going a little crazy here. I'm scheduling more videos than usual. Uh, and it's a good one. It's a good one. You'll, you'll like it. I'm going to talk about an interesting artist. Yes, it's going to be out Sunday. I'm crazy. I'm going to do more videos in the upcoming <laughs> days. Um, uh, John, awesome painting, Liron. Wishing you a wonderful birthday for Saturday. Yes, thank you, John. Yes, it is my birthday, Saturday. I hope the day is as special uh, as you are, my friend. Thank you so, so much. Yes, looking forward to mainly resting uh, during the weekend and having fun. Yeah, Jacqueline, that's a good point, too. I've seen some very strange paintings that people have paid money for. Yes, so if anything, you're like a, an example of proper paintings that people pay money for. Uh, Nancy, yes, what John says, happy birthday. Thank you so, so much. Um, Jacqueline and my cat is amused. Yes, yes, cats are pets. Any, anyone or thing that's close to us is a good, good muse and inspiration. Um, uh, Melanie, I love the light in your painting. I really struggle with that. Yeah, at the end of the day, it comes down to just the shapes. You know, you end up painting a bunch of shapes. Sometimes they'll connect. Sometimes they won't. That's fine. Um, some things don't read here as perfectly as I would, you know, ideally want. Um, and some of the interpretive freedom is the thing that's responsible for it looking nice. Because honestly, if you'd get a... Again, a highly realistic painting that was, was done very carefully in stage. If, let's say you'd see all the details you see here. Um, you'd see them. Um, it's very impressive technically, but I, it's less interesting to me. You know what I mean? It's just not as interesting to me to create that. What I'm looking for is that roughness a bit of like, it's my impression of it. And my hand's impression of it because it's inaccurate, you know? Um, so, yeah. Uh, Nancy Ruth should be in some. Yes, yes. I actually have an interesting process coming up. It's probably going to go. Uh, thank you, Jacqueline, by the way, for saying it's better than the photo. It's probably going to go in the upcoming course that I, I'm not sure when it's going to be out, Liron's Vault. I have an interesting cityscape process with Ruth in it. So we'll see about that. We'll see about that. It's going to be fun. With, and, and it looks really good. Ruth looks pretty photorealistic, by the way. Because uh, it's going to go on that course. It's a little more... Um, I'm saving up. I have like seven or eight processes that are high, high quality. I think they're some of the most impressive work I've done. It's hard to keep them. I really want to want to post them even on YouTube. I will in the future maybe one of them to kind of um, bring more people to the course. We'll see. But yeah, I have, I'm sitting on a couple of really good processes, including one that has Ruth in it. 
Uh, oh, Jacqueline, your birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday. Happy belated birthday. It's cool. Yeah, we're both Aries. Yes, indeed. Um, I never know like when the cutoff is for every zodiac sign. Honestly, people tell me. And now you told me, so I know we're... Because it could be, oh, yeah, the, the 10th and then the 13th is different. Um, Marjorie, thank you for being here and thank you for the kind uh, words. Thank you. Yes, our plan is uh, basically to relax. We'll go to some kind of a neat hotel. It's a surprise. I don't know where exactly, but it's going to be fun. Uh, and yeah. It's been a, a, a tiring couple of months, so it will be good to just truly, fully rest for two days or so. Yeah, right, Jacqueline? Usually it's the middle of the month, so I never know when it actually is. It's funny. Uh, Yanzar, thank you so, so much. Really appreciate it. Yeah, that's pretty much the process I have for today. Um, Laura, I always hesitate to give my paintings as gifts. If they purchased my paintings at a gallery or art show, it means they like my work. If I gift a piece, I feel like I'm forcing it on them. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, to me, if I gift a painting, it has to have a meaning. So, like, if I paint a friend and I'm gifting it, um, it doesn't have to have a meaning, but it will have a meaning. You know what I mean? Otherwise, I wouldn't gift it. Um... But yeah, it, it depends on the situation. I could see how gifting would feel like you're forcing it on someone, and I could see how they would be super happy, you know? Uh, sometimes it's, um, it's, it's the wisest to let people make that decision for themselves, you know? Uh, Laura, uh, not sorry, Laura, we read Laura. Jacqueline, my husband is in the 23rd, and he's a Taurus. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it's nice, it's consolidated. Yep, same month. Painting Ruth makes me happy. Yeah, I have a few paintings of her here. Maybe I'll do like a video on that. Just all the paintings I did of Ruth. I have at least... I'm actually looking at one here. You know, let me, I can show you. It's on the wall. I'll, I'll take it off. It's Ruth and I. This is up on the wall in front of me. Now, how can I not reflect the heck out of everything? I'll reflect the window. Let's see here. There we go. Ruth and I. <laughs> Ruthless Ruth. So what I like most about this painting, which is funny, is the, um, the background is so abstract. So it works really, it plays off really well with the, can you see it? With the rest of it. But yeah. Let's see if I can place it back without breaking anything. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, it's an old one. I have better ones of her, honestly. It's not the best. Um, uh, Marjorie, yes, yeah, stay well, everyone. So nice to spend time with you. Thank you for being here, Marjorie. If you have to go, no worries. Really appreciate it. Um, Jacqueline, I give my paintings as a gift to my friends. Yes, I have done that a few times. I have one of a friend that I want to give to them because they're in it and it's a really good painting. So I kind of think to myself what its value could be if I sold it in an auction or something. And I'm like, wow, that's a, that's a big gift I'm giving them. So, because it's a really good painting, we'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Don and Nancy. Yeah, it's an interesting painting. It's horrible. My daughter is the fourth. My sister-in-law is the same as me. My hobby, so many birthdays, so much cake. Yeah, it's all consolidated into one month. Man, that's rough. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of birthdays. But, you know, it's um, happy times. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you, Sandrine. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's always, you know, the more personal subjects always end up looking better, honestly. Uh, Diane, always a pleasure watching you paint around. Hope your birthday is special. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is a very, very kind of you. So let me tell you a bit of the plan because I have a few interesting videos in store. So I'm going to have... Uh, so next week, Sunday, is going to be Painting Masters. Uh, again, an interesting artist. Um, I have an interesting video I, I need to film still for um, Tuesday. Uh, about I talked about this a bit, if I have a practice schedule or something like that. And then I'll have an interesting uh, post for you on Patreon. 
uh, that I'm gonna open up for everyone so you will get to see it. Uh, we will have probably a live stream, a couple of short videos, um, and then I have an, a remake of an old video that someone requested, Scott actually requested um, a remake of my London Bridge scene. So that's gonna be interesting uh, in color. And then I want to direct you to another video. You'll see, I, I have a big plan for next week actually, but a lot of content to work on. Um, I just finished before the stream to uh, edit the Painting Masters one. And I haven't scheduled it yet. I just exported, you can, you can see from my eyes, <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, I just, um, I just uh, finished editing it. It turned out really well. And I think it has a potential to get a lot of views, kind of like the Sargent video. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I am rambling and waffling, as my friend John likes to say. Uh, I'm gonna let you go now, <laughs> but I want to thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the Watercolor Realism course if you get the chance. And by the way, I do want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon, like I do in the end of the videos. I don't say it enough in the live stream, so thank you so much for that. And yeah, I guess I will see you on Saturday's video and then on Sunday's video. And then every, every day is going to be a different video. But thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Diane, Sandrine, Jacqueline, ne uh, Jan's Art, everyone. Thank you. Much appreciated. Laura, hope you're doing well. John. And yeah, we'll talk to you again real soon. Till next time. Take care.